and welcome back to Java tutorial for beginners. In this video, we are going to talk about exceptions and exception handling. Whenever you write a program, there might be times when a stupid error occurs in the program that you are not aware of and the program stops midway abruptly with a very vague error message on the screen. Now, I know that that is very irritating at times and to deal with this situation, we have exceptions. Now, exception is a subclass of throwable and throwable also has another subclass called error. Errors are the problems in the program that a user has no control over like out of memory error or stack overflow error. Now, an exception is divided into two types, checked exception and unchecked exception. The checked exceptions are the ones that occur at compile time. So until and unless you fix these checked exceptions in your code, your program will not run. For example, IO exception or SQL exception. And runtime exception or unchecked exceptions are the exceptions that occur at runtime. For example, if you are going to divide a number by another number, which you are going to take as input from the user. Now let's say the user says divide 25 by 0. This is going to throw an arithmetic exception and it will be thrown at runtime because only at runtime will the JVM get to know that the number is being divided by 0. And other examples are null pointer exception. Now let me quickly take a look at the program and show you how you define exceptions and how the try catch block works to fix these exceptions. So let's create a simple function that would take two numbers as input and give you the output. Okay, so let me create two numbers. Let's say 25 and we will keep to 5. All right, and call the function here. Let's say divide. All right. Pass both the numbers in the function and this is what we want to print on our screen. Correct. Now let's go ahead and create our function. So public static void and divide which will take two numbers both are integers correct and this is going to return let's see the output we want to return from here so instead of returning void let's return int okay and once we do that now inside this function let's write the simple line that does the division so int result is equals to a by b all right fairly simple and we return the result now this re result when returned will be printed on the screen in main correct that is our simple function now let's save and run and see the output see you get 5 as output now what if b is turned to 0 save and run again you get this big list of exceptions saying exception in thread main which tells you what kind of exception arithmetic exception divide by zero and then it gives you more details about the line numbers so java 7 and java 13 so 7 is where we have called the function and 13 is where we have actually done the division so how do we deal with this we simply put our code that is these two lines of code into the try catch block okay so let's take this out write the try catch block so try control so try now inside this we'll do what we were doing before same thing result a by b and return result all right and spell it right of course return result now try catch should always be followed by a catch block or a finally block so we go ahead and write the catch block which would catch our arithmetic exception so you just say arithmetic 
exception e and whatever you want to give the message inside so say system dot out dot println don't divide by zero so now in this catch you can actually give whatever message you would want to give right return result now one more thing that i want to say is if your method is returning anything any value it cannot be inside the try block because if by chance you don't reach to the return statement in your try block then your method is not returning anything right so your return statement should always be outside your try catch correct now let's see what happens and your declaration of the variable should also be before the try so int result equals to zero right and inside this we just say result is a by b now save and run so you say don't divide by zero because you got the error and result is returned as zero right because we initialize it to zero we have returned the result the output came out to be zero now there are a few more ways in which you can display your output so let's say you don't want to do this you don't want to give a system dot out dot print in message what else can you do so your exception is in the object that you have created that is e now what else you can do is just say e dot get message now it will return the detail message string of the throwable class okay so save and run so you now get the same message that we got before the try catch that is divide by zero right another thing another way to show the error message is e dot to string now this as you can see clearly says that returns a short description of the throwable now once in a while if your throwable the error message is too long in e dot get message you can use to string to get the simple short message let's run and check it again that says java dot lang dot arithmetic exception so, so you know we have got an arithmetic exception that is divide by zero now this will print your stack trace let's just co comment out the rest and see what stack trace we get so you see you get the whole stack trace followed by the zero that we have initialized to our result variable so that is how we use try catch blocks to deal with exceptions in our programs now let me quickly give you a brief overview when you write a program you have a try block let's say it has five statements that you want to put inside the try block and then you follow it with a catch block that catches your exception and prints let's say error occurred in try block and finally we have a finally block which says the final message now whenever the program runs normally all these five statements would run and the catch block would not run because there was no error but the final block will still run because the final block always runs no matter whether there was an exception in your code or not and the other case could be that your error occurs let's say at statement number three now statement four and five will not execute and you'll straight ahead go to the catch block you execute the catch block print the error in try block and move on to the finally so whether an exception occurs or not in your try block the finally block will always be executed so that was it guys i hope you understood the concept of exceptions very clearly in this video we'll move on to user defined exceptions in the next video so don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss out on much more interesting videos coming up on the channel thank you so much for watching guys and happy coding